Okay, so this is my laptop today. This is a C50H. Apologies for the bad quality, but what we're looking at here is we've got a charging light, a little orange light on the side of it there. And when I press the power button on it, you seem to have to press this a little longer than most. When I press the power button, the blue light comes on, but nothing else happens. And that's our problem for today. Okay, so this is our laptop with the back of it. I'm just going to quickly give a description of all of the different bits on it here. So what we have up top here is our battery. Uh, this is our hard drive right here. This is our screen connector down at the bottom down here. This is our Super IO chip. This is our DIM. It's only one DIM slot on this. It's a small little motherboard. I'm not sure if there's another one fixed to the other side, but uh, this is the only one visible here anyway. This right here, this 8-bin chip here, is our BIOS chip. When I zoom in the other picture, you'll see that Winbond is written on it. That's how I know that it's the BIOS chip. Uh, just right beside that, we have our processor right here. Uh, this is our small little Wi-Fi card. This is the processor fan. And if you look, we have separate little ribbon cables off to other parts. This is to our touchpad. This is to the keyboard right here. This is for our battery. This is for the speakers. I know it's for the speakers because we have a set of two wires going left and a set of two wires going right and that comes off to a speaker here and there's a speaker on the other side as well. This is a ribbon cable here that goes to a daughter board. Uh, a daughter board which is over here and has a couple of um, a couple of USBs I think and a combo jack on it. We'll get a look at that uh, later on. And we have our BIOS battery here. So the BIOS battery is tucked up in a nice little plastic holder here and has a cable which goes down onto uh, a two-pin connection onto the motherboard. So that's just an overview of the motherboard there. We're going to take a focus in on the main motherboard itself. Um, once again, the fault that we have with this is that it has lights, but when you press the power on, it seems like it's powering on, but won't. Uh, it just gets hung, nothing ever shows up on the screen and it seems that the power, the charging circuit is also working because we've got a charging light as well. Okay perfect, this is zoomed in on our motherboard. So I know that there's some voltages online because the charging circuit is working and the power button is working so what that tells me is that whatever the charging voltage is is probably going to be there and the 3.3 voltage always on is probably there as well. So I just want to see which ones are online and which ones are not. And how we do that is we get our voltmeter and we switch it to volts DC. The 20 volt range will be fine. And then I get my black probe. I place it to ground, which I can find in any of the bits here. So say the back of the HDMI port. And what I'm looking for here is, nope, not that, red probe. So I take my red probe, I'm looking around for any of the inductors, alright? The inductors are these components right here, alright? See these big square grey components? Because every secondary output voltage will have one of these. And it's a good spot to try and measure to see how many of those secondary voltages are online. So you can see me pointing those out there as I'm talking. So I'm going to go around those one by one and measure for volts DC. So the way I do that is I just get my probe and carefully place it to one side of the inductor. You can actually place it to either side of the inductor uh, to take this reading, but I'm going to say I place it here. When I measure this inductor, I got zero volts on it. So I went around all of them measuring it in the same way. Uh, when I measured them, I got uh, 7.9 on the one right up here. I got 3.3 .3 on the one down beside that other one. I got zero down at the bottom. Um, I'm hoping you can see me mark off all of these. Uh, on the one just up from that, two right here, I got zero and zero. And then on the ones above those, I got 1.8 and 1.8. So I'm going to just bring the pointer around just to show those, just in case it wasn't visible on that. So 7.8 here, 3.3 on this one here, zero volts on this one here, zero volts on this one right here as well. 0 volts on these two and 1.8 and 1.8. So what we can see is that this is 
probably our battery charging circuit. What I did next was I placed my probe here, still in volts DC mode. I checked the pin on the battery here and sure enough there was 8 volts on that. So that seems to be the correct voltage for the battery and that's why our charging light is working because our charging circuit seems to be working. Down here I measured 3.3 volts on this. That seems to be the right one. It's in around where it should be so I think that's okay. This is zero. That could well be the 5 volt rail because it's beside the 3.3 um, but there's nothing coming out of that at the moment. Down here there's nothing on this one which is close to the RAM so that's likely to be the secondary voltage for the RAM which should be 1.2. There's nothing here and I put my hand on the processor and the processor is cold so the processor is not starting. And we also have 1.8 volts and 1.8 volts on these two so they're probably uh, the correct voltage is also. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe somebody could post down in the comments what exactly the 1.8 volts is for. Other points that I can check at here are our bias pin, our bias chip right here. As you can see, I've marked in the eight pins on the bias chip. It says wind bond on it, so that's how I know that it's the bias chip there. 25Q something something. What well, we can probably see it on this actually. Q128JY5Q. So if you if you put that into a search engine, you'll find that that's a bias chip. But on the bias chip, if we find pin 8, we should have 3.3 volts on pin 8 as well. And the way that works is we've got pin 1 is down beside here. So we're counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And when I measured right there, I had 3.3 right here on that. Okay. And just... To show the pinouts again, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we were good for 3.3 volts on the BIOS chip also. Just one other spot to check is beside the startup chip. We should have 3.3 volts close enough to the startup chip as well. So if we zoom in right here, I place my probe down to one of these capacitors here. I hope you can see it on this side of the capacitor. And when I measured right there, I was able to measure 3.3 volts right there. So there are the voltages that we had online. Um, what I decided to do at this point was just to take out the board because there's a lot of cables and stuff in it. So what I decided to do first was just take out the motherboard and start troubleshooting from there. So I was taking the cables out one by one. So just this one, this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. But what I decided to do was just before unscrewing the board and taking it out, with all of the cables disconnected, I tried to power on. Obviously, I needed to need, need to keep the keyboard connected for the power button to work. But with all of the other cables disconnected, I tried to power on, and sure enough, it powered on. So I tried each of the cables one by one, and it turned out that it was this cable right here uh, that's plugged into the daughter board with a couple of USBs on it. So when I would plug this out, the motherboard and the PC would boot. When I would plug it in, it would get stuck at exactly the same spot as it was getting stuck on before. So obviously this was a good result for me because at the very least I could get this laptop back to the customer with just you know the, the uh, ports on the daughter board disconnected. But I disconnected this and I said I would have a look at the board. So this is the little daughter board. Once again, when we plug this into the motherboard, the laptop will not boot. When we disconnect this board, the laptop will boot. So we know that we've got an issue with this. So I've disconnected it right here, so there's no power going to the board. And what I did first was just a visual inspection. A lot of the time what you can see is somebody damages these ports. Somebody puts a USB connector into an Ethernet connector or something like that. But I checked the pins on the Ethernet adapter. They're all fine. I checked the pins on the USB. All fine. Combo jack looks okay. And the SD card, there's nothing stuck in it or anything wrong with that at all. So the next thing I decided to do was just carry out a few checks on the board and just see what the problem is. Just before I go any further, anybody with really good eyesight may well be able to see this fault with uh, a visual inspection alone. So just keep your eye out and see if you can spot it. For troubleshooting, I put my multimeter into diode mode, as you can see right here. I then place my red probe to ground and we're going to check readings across the board in diode mode. Once again, this is with the power off. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to capacitors around the board and taking measurements. So the capacitors are these little 
components right here. So on one side of each of these capacitors it will be connected to ground so when I do a measurement reading right here in diode mode I get zero zero obviously because it's shorted straight to ground it's just a wire straight to ground but the other side of the capacitors should not be connected to ground it should be a non-zero value when I check it for this component right here it's 0 0.445 so I know that we have no short along that line so I went round the board doing similar checks on the capacitors right here to see if I could find a capacitor that had zero on one side and zero on the other side indicating that we had a short and what I found was when I came to right here and I placed my probe on this side of the capacitor which I expected to be connected to ground obviously because it's connected to the ground plane I got zero zero on this side zero zero right here but when I connected to this side I got zero zero also so there was also a short uh, so there was a short on this side also so it was basically like we had a wire connected straight to ground and on closer visual inspection you can probably see it yourself now I could see that this capacitor right here did not look good I've got an image of that right here that I took afterwards um, which you can see right here so that capacitor was actually you had a part of it blown off right here so I haven't identified that there was an issue you know that there was a short here and that this capacitor looked damaged I took this capacitor off the board so when I took that capacitor off the board uh, I connected my ribbon cable back in the ribbon cable obviously is the one right here I connected that back in connected it back to the motherboard and when I powered the laptop on it worked fine then so I didn't bother replacing the capacitor on this uh, that was the fault just that capacitor on its own so I'm not sure exactly what caused that whether this is a faulty cap on these boards or whether they possibly plugged something into the USB that caused this to fail maybe if anybody else has a similar model they could let me know if you've experienced a similar fault with this um, but removing that component right there was what resolved the issue for me I'm just going to go back to the main board as a sort of a, a summation and we're just going to take the final measurements on those inductors just to see what they all should be when the when the laptop is working fully. Okay so to, just to end this video I'm just going to come back to my inductors here because this information might be useful to somebody who's checking a similar laptop. With the laptop powered up and running these are the voltages on the inductors uh, when the laptop is you know online and everything is functional so there is 7.9 on that that was always right that's for the battery charging circuit with the 3.3 volts which was originally on this as well uh, that is still 3.3 so that's fine this one was zero but because of the short on the USB I think uh, this was not coming online but that is 5 volt when working this one right down here 